Get ready for the morning rush. A quick wrap of your news and weather. We'll start with Kristen Curry. Again, morning. Nothing to worry about today. We'll see lots of sunshine across the entire region. Temperatures very warm, especially for this time in April. We are looking at a good 10 to 15 degrees above average. But tomorrow, a little bit of a different story. Possibility of a few spotty showers near the northern state line in southern Colorado as our next storm system pushes in. Not necessarily a huge rain or snowmaker. Most of us getting hit with strong winds. Crystal. As you get ready to head out the door, we're following today's top stories. A U.S. airstrike against Syria is a big story this morning. Sarah Yingling starts us off with the very latest. This morning, the Pentagon is evaluating the results of a military strike on the Syrian regime leader of Bashar al-Assad in response to its deadly chemical attack on its civilians. This after the U.S. launched nearly 60 cruise missiles from, a US, from U.S. Navy warships in the Mediterranean Sea at a Syrian airfield. That airfield is believed to be where the planes that dropped chemical weapons on civilians in Syria earlier this week had taken off from. How Congress is responding, coming up in the Five Facts. Chris. And this morning, Russia is now reacting. Russian Foreign Ministry says that Moscow is suspending a 2015 deal with the U.S. aimed to avoid mid-air collisions over Syria. Big concern for the U.S. Russian Vla President Vladimir Putin is also denouncing the strike, calling it, quote, aggression against a sovereign state in violation of the norms of international law. And new this morning, the Tur Turkey's foreign minister is supporting the U.S.'s decision to attack that Syrian base, and he's now calling for the removal of Syrian President Bashar Assad's administration administration, Al-Assad's administration, uh, urging supporters of Assad to help establish a political solution. On to other news out of Washington. In just hours, the Senate is expected to confirm Neil Gorsuch as the next justice of the Supreme Court. This after GOP leadership used the so-called nuclear option to clear the way for him. Now, Gorsuch only needs a simple majority from the full Senate. The GOP is expected to have the numbers to confirm Gorsuch with the vote scheduled for around 930 this morning, our time. Catherine. The governor could run out of time to take action on the state budget bill. The deadline is just hours away. Thing is, if she fails to act, it has the same effect as a veto. It's called a pocket veto. The governor vowed to veto any proposal that raises taxes, and this one does. While Democratic leaders say the raises are reasonable and necessary, Governor Martinez calls them irresponsible. She says she'll call a special meeting to address the budget, a special session rather, but hasn't said when. Happening today, a woman charged with murder from two years ago is expected to give a plea in court. In 2014, Danny Trujillo shot and killed Eloy Leyva after the DA's office claimed that Samantha Garcia told them that Leyva was sexually abusing her daughter. The DA's office says that Garcia was lying and was just trying to get someone to kill Leyva, and Trujillo took the bait. New this morning, we're waiting to learn more about police activity in northwest Albuquerque. APD says officers responded to a house near Kachina and Sweetwater around 7 o'clock last night. They say it possibly stems from domestic violence. They attempted to communicate with someone inside the home there who was not cooperative. Santa Fe police say they're one step closer this morning to finding out who is stealing people's credit card information at bank ATMs. Surveillance video shows a man at Los Alamos National Bank on Cerrillos. They believe he's the one planting skimmers in the ATMs. Police uh, people, I should say, began reporting fraudulent charges on their accounts. So employees went out to that machine and found the skimmer. This morning, we're waiting to hear what charges a high school teen in Clovis could face after police responded to reports of a gun on campus. Yesterday, police were called out to the high school after someone reported seeing two magazines of ammunition in the student's car. The school was placed on lockdown. Officers say the ammunition was recovered from the student's car after a search. No weapons or no guns rather were found. New this morning, UNM's athletic director is negotiating a potential seven-figure naming rights deal for a school athletic facility. That's according to the journal. It's not clear who the donor or what the venue would be. This comes as the university continues its agreement with Wise Pies, which signed a $5 million 10-year deal for naming rights to the pit around two years ago. Family, friends, and fans are mourning the death of legendary comic Don Rickles. Rickles sarcastically nicknamed Mr. Warmth because of his talent of making insults pretty funny. He died at his Los Angeles home yesterday at the age of 90. He appeared in both film and television and was a regular on late night talk shows. His publicist says he died of kidney failure. He will be missed. A new at six for the first time, the FDA has approved self-administered genetic tests that give a person's risk for conditions including Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. But federal health officials say those tests from the company 23andMe cannot determine a person's overall risk of developing a disease because lifestyle and environment also play a role. 
Today's Metro Threat Index at a zero. Nothing to worry about here in the Metro. We have sunshine overhead. Winds will stay light out of the southwest, about 5 to 15 miles per hour. And the best part about finishing up the work week is we are going to be looking at very warm temperatures, close to 80 degrees here in Albuquerque as we finish up the day. Crystal? On to news happening tomorrow, you can dig into some great food for the third annual Food Truck and Craft Beer Festival. The event will highlight some of New Mexico's most popular food trucks as well as dozens of regional and national craft beers. You can purchase tickets for $5 online, $10 at the gate. Beer tickets are being sold on site for 6 bucks and drink responsibly. And you can catch the Albuquerque Isotopes in action again tonight at Here at Home. The Topes opened up their 15th season last night with a 7-4 win over the Salt Lake Bees. Over 8,000 people showed up for the home opener. If you want to see a, a game, they're in the middle of a five game stand at Isotopes Park right now. On to new details now. The former affiliate of the Isotopes, the Miami Marlins, could have a well known owner soon. Recognize this guy? Former New York Yankee Derek Jeter and former Florida Governor Jeb Bush are reportedly some of the names being batted about as possibly being bidders to buy the Marlins. Marlins manager says Jeter has always talked about owning a team one day. Maybe he will. Time now for a check on your Friday morning commute. Good news is nothing significant to slow you down. Looks like we're uh, moving at about 55 to 65 there. I-25 southbound, but overall clean and green across the metro. A new video this morning shows the aftermath of those floods in Atlanta Wednesday that put some city workers in jeopardy. The cruise truck right there got stuck in the rising water, so they sat on top of the roof until the fire department could get to them. Luckily, everybody was unharmed in this situation, but they sure dealt with a lot. Absolutely. Okay, money going to a great cause this morning after approximately 100 hot air balloons took off from Dover in the UK early this morning. It's an attempt to break the Guinness World Record for the most balloons to fly across the English Channel all at once. The existing world record sits at 49. It raised money for local charities, so hopefully they got at least 50. That's, That's cool. awesome. Yeah, that'd be so cool. <laughs> oh, balloon fiesta with guys. <laughs> Time now for the five facts. We'll start with number five. New Mexico is getting some well-deserved attention for its rising film industry this morning. The Hollywood Reporter named New Mexico one of the eight hotspots for film in the U.S. and Canada and cited the movie Hell or High Water, Longmire, and Better Call Saul all as reasons for New Mexico's ranking. How cool is that? Mm -hmm. Props to us. On to number four now, more than 60 bills will become law soon after the approval from the governor. Among them, a bill that would allow students to take a year off after high school without losing the lottery scholarship. The bill was seen as a win-win, giving students a 16-month grace period after high school and helping to prop up the dwindling lottery scholarship fund. And number three, warm and sunny across the state today. Tomorrow, windy as our next storm approaches. We are going to be looking at the possibility of a few spotty to scattered showers late Saturday into Sunday. The winds continue Sunday afternoon, but our drop in temperature leaves us in the 60s as we finish up the weekend. At number two and number one, both covering the U.S. strikes against Syria. We're going to start with reaction from Congress. At least two dozen members of Congress were briefed or notified about that attack. The reaction to the president's order was mostly positive. However, House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi and other Democrats said that the president should have consulted with Congress first. Some are now calling on House lawmakers to return to Washington. And that brings us to number one. Of course, the president's order to airstrike Syria. Most talked about story this morning. The latest reports state seven people were killed in the U.S. missile strike on the Syrian air base. Officials say that base was home to the warplanes that carried out a recent chemical attack by the Syrian government killed dozens of civilians just days ago in that war-torn country. We're told at least 10 children were killed that incident. The president saying the order to strike was vital for the national security interest of the U.S. Now, in a briefing with the press late last night, the Secretary of State also told reporters since 2013 there have been 50 small-scale chemical weapons attacks in Syria, which are consistent violations between the 2013 Obama deal with Syria. So a lot going on this morning, a lot of reaction pouring in throughout the world and from right here across the U.S.